Hi guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope. This one is for Monday the 5th of September going through until Sunday the 11th of September 2022. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm going to give you a rundown of what the planets are doing this week, what energy they create amongst themselves, and how you can use that energy to your advantage by hopping on the good stuff and avoiding some of the negatives and the problems and the potential pitfalls of that. Now, the first thing I noticed about this week is that there's a lot going on. And in kind of two day chunks, you're going to shift gears quite dramatically. So on certain days, you'll be interested in work, for example, and then other days, relationships are your top priority and work doesn't even exist. So it's really full on and extreme. Um, I think the important thing this week is to try and go with the flow and to keep your eyes and ears open and to be willing to go with change. If you don't, there may be a sense of whiplash, like you're being pushed and pulled in directions that you don't want to go in. So I'm going to go through each day, starting with Monday, the 5th of September. We've got Venus, the planet of love and beauty and creativity that goes into Virgo at five minutes past six in the morning. So Venus in Virgo is now in an earth sign. Venus is able to express itself very well in a tangible sense. So it's able to, to pick something up and to get creative with it, whether that's writing or art or sculpture or flower design or fashion whatever it is. Virgo is also very focused on physical health and the body. So Venus going into Virgo kind of signals this time of um, health being a priority for you and looking at your own kind of system and seeing how you can make improvements to that. Virgo is often associated with the nurse. It likes to be of service and it's ruled by Mercury, the communication planet. So information becomes very interesting. And anything where you can take something that already exists and you can transform it and adapt it creatively is going to give you a real sense of joy. The Capricorn moon then also squares Jupiter, the lucky planet, and Chiron, an asteroid um, known as the wounded healer in a chart. Both of those are in Aries and it squares Mercury in Libra. So the moon in Capricorn urges you to work very hard and to be productive and it's very serious about that. It's not so interested in whether you're actually enjoying your work, it's more interested in what you're producing. And with the friction of the square between the moon in Capricorn saying work, 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 and Jupiter and Chiron saying, hey, actually work on something that's meaningful for yourself because that's what's going to make you feel better, and be more selective and discerning in terms of what you give your energy to, basically. And Mercury in Libra is then very creative and people-oriented. The community, um, expressing things, again, beautifully. Mercury in Libra is able to write music and to, yeah, create amazing speeches that will re be remembered for years. The Moon then also trines the Sun in Virgo and it quincuxes Mars in Gemini. So Mars, the red planet, in Gemini is also very focused on expressing itself and looking at information and making sense of things. So a lot of these um, placements and signs of the zodiac are influenced by Mercury, the communication planet. So I think Monday starts in quite a cerebral way. Um, logic, order and reason, they're your biggest priorities at the beginning of the week and also you're kind of passionate about information you want to educate yourself and learn and broaden your horizons and have this whole sense of discovery going on and um, also getting very grounded and practical is a good idea sorting out your home your schedule your work your your diet all of those things will be very productive and will feel enjoyable at the same time looking at how improvements can be made in any area of your life that's going to be very fruitful. And then again, creative people, particularly writers, will be prolific on this day because the ideas come really easily. And then the words or the, the paint to kind of capture those ideas, it's going to match very nicely. So what you have in your mind's eye and what you want to express and articulate. On Tuesday, the 6th of September, we've got the moon still in Capricorn. That now conjuncts Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto is the planet of death and rebirth. It's transformation and change and the ruler of Scorpio. So it's really about getting to the core issue of something. And Pluto in Capricorn is always urging you <clears throat> to work towards change to make things better. And now with the moon in Capricorn, you're really rolling up your sleeves here on Tuesday and you're like, okay, I'm ready for work. What's next? What can I improve? So you, Monday, Tuesday here, you're super productive and this whole can-do attitude serves you really well. So if there's something in your life that's outstanding or it takes forever to complete or it's a dreary task, 
And look at those kind of things Monday, Tuesday, because your energy is just exuberant and you'll be able to complete things which have been outstanding for a while. The Capricorn Moon also trines Uranus and Taurus on Tuesday, the 6th of September. So we've got three things in Earth now. We've got the Moon in Capricorn, Pluto in Capricorn, and Uranus, the planet of the miraculous and the unexpected in the Earth sign Taurus. So changes in your physical, practical life. And it sextiles Neptune and Pisces. So we've got Earth and Water. Both of those are feminine elements. It's about listening and being receptive to what is. So listening to spiritual guidance in your imagination and then seeing what materials you have in your physical life that you can work with to kind of uh, replicate what you've got up here. So again, it's very creative and it's very much about I'm the outsider looking in and this is my perspective on what's going on. So Tuesday the 6th, you're in hard work mode, whether that's creative or the office job that you dislike or the life purpose that you're living, you're working hard at whatever you're focused on. The other thing is that you're going to be very clear on your goals and what you're ultimately working towards. So if you find it quite difficult to make sense of your own ambition or what it is you're moving towards, you feel that there's some sort of movement or drive, but you don't know exactly what the outcome is, you that'll make sense, the light bulb will go off here. Look at what you're interested in on Tuesday the 6th, so what you're passionate about, and ask yourself how that could evolve in future. So if you find yourself free of charge doing a tea leaf reading for all your friends, and you really enjoy the whole process and people get something out of it, then maybe that you're doing that for a reason. Maybe it's more significant than just like a throwaway hobby, you know, because you're doing it anyway. Wednesday, the 7th of September, we've got the moon going into Aquarius at 541 in the morning. I was thinking about this the other day, actually. I'm a Virgo, right? So my son is in an earth sign Virgo, which is the ruler is Mercury, understanding, making sense. I get on really well with Aquarians. And Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, planet of change and the miraculous. It's about free thinking and big ideas and kind of looking outside of the box and also a, a very strong kind of social conscience, like how can I be of service and how can I use my ideas and apply them to, to make them useful, you see? So the moon into going into Aquarius makes you tap into this kind of ideas person vibe. The wheels are turning, you're going to be inspired easily, you'll be able to see solutions that other people can't. The Aquarius moon then sextiles Jupiter and Chiron in Aries, who are your friends, because it's good luck and your personal healing. Both of those are urging you to say, hey, think about your circumstances and what you can do on your own to change them and improve them so that you're going to be happier by the end of this. It trines Mars in Gemini and Mercury in Libra, so the communication brothers or sisters are back in the game. Mars technically is about drive, but in Gemini it says, how can I express my voice, my opinion? And Mercury in Libra says, how can I express myself beautifully? And also like, it, it, it's mul multifaceted Mercury in Libra. It's not just beautiful creation. It's also the legal system and being able to see the other person's part in it and fairness and all these other things. It quincuxes the Sun in Virgo and Venus in Virgo. So both of those are interested in you getting something done, being grounded, and doing something that's helpful for the future. The Sun in Virgo then quincuxes Chiron in Aries. So it's kind of urging you to um, get creative with your practical life and whether you're happy with it. And now the focus shifts and you're not so interested on in... Um, just logic and reason and work, you're now interested in your part in all of that and your experience of your work and your life. So on Wednesday, um, with this Aquarius, things loosen up a bit and you become more easygoing in your thinking. Um, you're also more interested in new experiences now than you are in work. You want to think outside of the box and not only just be productive. So this is the first major shift here in the week. So anything that involves other people, socializing and public speaking and um, getting creative, whether that involves others or not, all of those are good areas to pursue. If um, personal healing is an issue or you're trying to find a cure for an ailment, you know, something that is an ongoing problem, Wednesday the 7th is really the best day to do research on that and to try new methods and treatments. Something may appear that you hadn't been aware of before. Maybe it's a new solution that's presented itself. Thursday, the 8th of September, we've got the Aquarius moon now forming a conjunction with Saturn in Aquarius. 
So you're very cushioned and very cozy and comfortable when it comes to other people. It's kind of like you've got your professional face on and you're not overly uh, demanding of anyone's attention or feelings or support. You're, you're like operating quite independently here. Um, the Aquarius moon also squares Uranus and Taurus. So thinking about changes and what you can do to solve problems are so very proactive still and constructive. Sextiles Chiron and Aries, what's in it for me? And it quincuxes the sun in Virgo. So how can I do this in the most diligent, practical, straightforward way? So your ideas are now very focused on solutions and using info as like a tool, as a as a as a an implement. <laughs> So on Thursday, you have your legal head on, your cerebral side is, is um, supported, you're very intellectual, ideas are very interesting to you. So it's a good day to um, write essays and to negotiate and to settle disputes. You're also still very personable and charming here and you find it easy to get what you want. So dip your toe or try, test the waters when it comes to some of your riskier ideas and see what the reception is to those. I think you'll be surprised at how well you can put your point across and you'll, you're also very likely to be received very well by other people. Yeah. Okay. Friday, the 9th of September, we've got the moon now going into Pisces at 6.42 in the morning. The moon in Pisces is very ethereal and very focused on the spiritual truth of our human experience. It's the last sign of the zodiac. So it asks the big questions that aren't so focused on, you know, practical concerns of everyday living, like where am I going to get my cheese from for, you know, it's much more about what's the meaning of life and um, what, what speaks to my soul. You can only do those things when you have enough food on the table. So the moon in Pisces now almost puts you into this easy breezy spiritual mode. And it kind of makes sense to me because it comes after this huge period of productivity and work. It's almost like the the, the quiet after the storm. So again, now spiritually, if, you're, if, if that's a big part of your life, you'll find that very easy to connect with. The Pisces moon also opposes Venus and Virgo, so they're at odds with one another. <clears throat> it quincuxes Mercury and Libra, and it squares Mars and Gemini. So it really connects with all the personal planets. Well, Venus, Mercury, and Mars. Yeah, all the personal planets. So Mars is in Gen Gemini. I want to express myself and engage. Uh, Mercury in Libra, I want to consider other people in that and express myself beautifully. And Venus in Virgo is I want to do something that's healing and healthy and productive. So your heart is in the right place. If your imagination is fired here, then it's good to really ask yourself what is important to you. Venus in Virgo, Quincux is Jupiter in Aries. So again, it's like, what can I do for myself that's going to benefit me in my life? Or what's sensible? Like, how can I improve my health? Like, how can I improve my daily routine? It's really this constructive sense of, okay, I'm on team you. How can we make things better? Mercury goes retrograde until the 2nd of October. So Mercury is the communication planet. And it's the ruler of Venus and, not Venus, Virgo and Gemini. And when Mercury goes retrograde, communication becomes more difficult. So emails go missing or computer information technology plays up. Um... Travel plans are often disrupted, like flights are delayed, luggage goes missing. It's that kind of stuff. It's just communication glitches. So um, it's in retrograde until the 2nd of October. While this planet does appear to go backwards, just make sure that if you're signing contracts or if you're doing any serious kind of communication, make sure that you read everything and it's all correct. Just double check everything. So on Friday, you shift gears into a more personal and less public mode. Pursuing hobbies or taking time to recharge will work really, really well. If you're trying to improve your diet or um, nutrition in general or the way you treat your body, you know, like doing good, healthy things for yourself, working out the details, that's going to come easily. So again, you may find a new sort of solution or treatment that helps you. Communication does become more difficult with Mercury going retrograde. So just read the fine print. Saturday, the 10th of September, we've got... The full moon happening in Pisces. So I'll make a separate video on that. A full moon is when the moon reaches its completion point and it lets go. And we'll feel a lot of Pisces energies coming down. Pisces energy coming down. So it's very dreamlike and ethereal and focused on the spiritual realities and truths of our experience. So answering the big questions around the weekend is going to be easier. 
The Pisces moon then conjuncts Neptune and Pisces, so listen to what you're getting in your dreams, either on the night of Friday the 9th or Saturday the 10th. It opposes the sun in Virgo, sextiles Uranus and Taurus, and Pluto and Capricorn. So we've got all this Earth coming back into the chart now. So on Saturday, I feel that your intuition is kind of knocking on the door saying, hello, we want you to be aware of some truth here. And if you're not particularly spiritually inclined, it's wonderful that we've got all this earthy stuff, the sun in Virgo and Uranus and Taurus and Pluto and Capricorn here, because I think that Saturday, your higher self is going to knock on the door, but loudly, in the sense that you're going to get a sign from the universe urging you to change course. And I feel that that's particularly going to happen in that you'll get a sign in a kind of practical, 3D, earthy, physical way. So whether it's a um, billboard or um, uh, the, like a, um, a message or a note or anything to, that you hadn't expected that really gives you a very clear, concrete sign to pay attention, to potentially change course, to pursue one of your own hopes and dreams. And it's like, yeah, they're trying to get your attention. So Saturday the 10th then is a good day for readings, doing them, having them, and to use divination systems yourself. So coffee grinds, tea leaves, runes, tarot cards, astrology, the I Ching, anything like that. Um, anything, th those kind of systems that allow you to get answers or to make plans for the future to get kind of some clarity around what you want to do. If you're going through a transition or something, what should I focus on? Where should I go next? Saturday is really good for that. Sunday, the 11th of September, we've got the moon going into Aries at 8.47 in the morning. So if Pisces is concerned with the spiritual truths, then Aries is concerned with achieving things in the physical world. It's very much about taking practical action. The Aries moon conjuncts Jupiter and Aries. It opposes Mercury and Libra, sextiles Mars and Gemini, and quincuxes Venus and Virgo. So you're interested in now improving something about yourself. You're not so interested about the community or friendships or relationships. The sun in Virgo trines Uranus and Taurus. So that may make you feel like I want to do something big. Like I want to have a big experience that I'll remember. I want to make a memory here. Sunday the 11th then. Um, exercise is going to be super helpful in creating a sense of momentum in your life. Something wants to move, something wants to shift by getting your body moving. I think that's a very easy way of tapping into that. Anything to do with the physical body, health, diet, appearance, living environment, exercise, you'll be able to see what you like and what you uh, want to change in any of those areas. What are you satisfied with? This is what I'm okay with. And mm, this needs some work. This is what I want to make, do differently in future. Um, so you'll get the answers you're looking for and you're going to be very proactive about implementing those solutions then. And you can get a lot done on Sunday. It, it kind of feels like you're tidying up your life a bit. It's like a, it's a spring clean kind of vibe. Yeah. So that's what I get for you this week. I hope you have a wonderful time. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to order your reading with me. In my personal readings, I use astrology, the tarot, and numerology. I combine all three. And the astrology chart particularly, that's a snapshot of the sky at the moment you were born. I take your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth, and then I can draw that up. And that's like a blueprint of your soul. It shows me strengths, weaknesses, life purpose, work talents, relationships, what's likely to come up in future, living situation, where good locations are for you specifically. So there are a number of things I can use and it really provides an unbelievable amount of answers. That's why I love astrology. And then I use the numbers in the chart and look at the meanings of those. And I use the cards as I go. So if you do have any questions and please do get in touch with me for a personal reading. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please hit subscribe and share the video online. Have an amazing week and I'll speak to you next week. All the best.